Hello and welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today we're working on a dynamic registration form for the Pacific Yearly Meeting annual session. The form is going to collect data about the event attenders, the registrants, and some of the fields on the form should show or hide based on the values in other form fields. Uh, so I went with jQuery on this. Uh, no shame in the game. I think jQuery has been around for 14 years. It's a very solid um, tool. It's got its quirks and caveats, but I've really been working to keep the dependencies in this project to a minimum. I don't want a whole front-end framework. Uh, build tools, webpack, and all that stuff. We just want to sprinkle in some JavaScript and make the form a little bit more user-friendly, progressive enhancement style. So jQuery is a go-to. We've already got jQuery in the project to begin with, so the more I use the dependency, the more value we get from including it. That said, the code we wrote today takes the values inputted into the, the numeric value and put it into the age field and displays appropriate accommodations for the registrant of that age. So a three-year-old in the event uh, would be registered by their parent, but their parent could choose that the three-year-old um, would be in either a camping or dorm accommodation, uh, again, with their parent. Now, a 33-year-old can also go into camping, dorm, or semi-private uh, for the age range, 26 through 99. We had to set an upper limit in order to do the arithmetic uh, in your case, it's kind of weird, but yeah, there it is. And let's say, like, if you're 22, you would be in a different age bracket and pay different prices. That's the key thing is um, to, uh, basically to encourage younger people to attend, there's a discount um, sort of sliding scale. So a 16-year-old registrant, it's 55 a day for camping. 22-year-old is also 55. 26-year-old is... 100 a day, so, and then uh, children are free. There we go, that's the logic. The data is stored in the back end in the database. Um, I actually haven't been live streaming how we created this, but uh, we have accommodation types and then a fee structure of accommodations based on age range, accommodation type, and whether or not you're staying for the full event, which is a week long event, or if you're selecting a few of the days, you'll pay just a little bit more for a uh, daily, uh, a la carte, sort of. You'll pay more per day, that is. Great, let's take a quick spin through the code that powers the form. So again, we're using jQuery here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get the list of these options. There's a whole bunch of them, there's like 16 of them based on the combinations of age and um, accommodation types. So we've got a list of them, and then when the page first renders, we're just gonna hide everything. And later on, you'll see that you know, some attenders won't even need accommodation, overnight accommodations at all. So this shouldn't display for them. But when they, there are the cases that they do need overnight accommodations, we need them to select and pay an appropriate fee for that. So when the form first renders, we'll just hide all the overnight accommodations. If you notice though, this label is still there. I'm gonna have to, the DOM is a little bit messy. It's a sibling. It's not kind of nestled within the same um, form element. So Django automatically generates the um, form markup and I'll probably just have to write the HTML next time. So it's not a big deal, uh, but that way I'll have more fine grain control, can use bootstrap classes and do um, nice layout and give things semantic IDs and things like that. All right. So then we're gonna attach an event listener on this age event, uh, so this age input. When the input, re when a, the input receives some input, so a key up or somebody typing in or using these um, arrows here, you can see it changes. Uh, it's gonna run the function show eligible accommodations. And the eligible accommodations is gonna be the list of these inputs, these individual overnight accommodation inputs, these radio buttons, uh, that pass the criteria for eligibility. And let's just take a look at that. 
So the first thing we do is get the registrant age from the uh, from the DOM, and it's actually in this event event target value, but I didn't wasn't able to pass that in from the event to this filter function. I even had it defined in the same scope where the filter function is applied, but it wasn't picking it up. So I needed to grab the register age uh, by selecting it and parsing it to an integer, which is another frustrating point. I tried this both with the pure JavaScript way and with um, uh, jQuery. And even though this is a numeric field, uh, it's being treated as like a number field. It's being treated as a string. So <laughs> Just gonna parse that as an int. Now with attributes, I understand that they, you know, it's a little more understandable that they would be treated as strings by default. Uh, so we had to also parse the integer, had to parse int on those. If we look, and I'm not gonna dig too much into back uh, ground code, but essentially the way the form is uh, rendered, I've appended the data attributes for the minimum age and maximum age and the prices, which will be used to calculate the, um, the registration cost later. Um, so we're getting those values those from those data attributes and parsing them to integer. So once we've got the age of the registrant and minimum and maximum for the individual accommodation option element, uh, we'll just double check that the age had been entered just in case this fires early. This might not be an, uh, necessary for me to check that. I just didn't want to have a, a console error. I'll, I'll double check if I can remove that. First, we'll see if they're old enough, which means that their age is above or uh, greater than or equal to the minimum age for that accommodation uh, option, which is, um, again, it's a fee. Uh, it's an accommodation type and an age range anyway, or and if they're young enough. So they want to be basically within the age range. Um, so that's essentially what this is. They're in the correct age range. That their registration age is less than or equal to the maximum age allowed in that accommodation type. And if that both of those criteria pass, then that uh, they're eligible for that accommodation. And we will first hide everything because this is changing as the um, input changes. So we don't want to leave the previous ones shown. We want to hide it every time so that Otherwise, we would just have an accumulator, an accumulator basically grabbing all the accommodations options. I don't think it'll be very often that this changes, but for example, if you type in 33, um, you would have the accommodations options for three-year-olds and 33-year-olds. So um, basically, we need to hide them all and then show them all. And here's the, since this uh, is generated by Django, uh, I don't have control over the markup, so I actually I wanted to show the, show and hide the entire list item, and um, the input we're getting the data off of is nested twice within a list item, so I had to kind of go up, but uh, two layers, and then show the uh, ancestor, grandparent. But this is uh, actually really cool that jQuery lets you do this. Um, I think that's one of the main paradigm shifts that jQuery brought both, you know, it made things normal across browsers and, and pretty consistent and stable over time as well as across browsers, but it also lets you do operations on multiple items and, uh, you know, since I've been using like Python and NumPy, for example, or pandas by extension, uh, I've come to appreciate what are called um, vectorized operations where you apply one operation on multiple elements, like a whole array of items, like a NumPy array. And that this is essentially what's happening here. I'm applying an operation to show operation on all of these um, DOM elements instead of having to iterate over them. So, I mean, I think going back to the, sort of the basics like this, you know, uh, firstly, just trying to use native JavaScript where possible, although I don't have any examples here. I, I relied heavily on jQuery, but jQuery has been around again for around 14 years. So in a way it is a basic um, element of a web developer's toolkit and so commonly available, uh, you know, Bootstrap is using it and things like that. I think maybe they'll be deprecating it, but in any case, jQuery is still developed. So I just think as an industry, you know, we need to kind of keep these things around. A, a lot of what jQuery can do maybe is now part of the, uh, and has informed the 
the JavaScript standards, but at the same time, these vectorized operations are an example of there are still some powerful capabilities in jQuery, so let's not write it off, let's not abandon it uh, because it's not you know, the hippest thing. Uh, let's kind of keep uh, build on legacy tools and let's not use legacy as a disparaging term. Uh, it's not a bad word. So in any case, I'm glad to be using jQuery and learning a little bit along the way. And we'll be doing more dynamic field rendering in future live coding sessions. Thanks for hanging out, checking this out. Again, this has been a codebuddies.org live code recap. If you'd like to get involved with the Code Buddies community, we're in the middle of, or I'd say the beginning or early stages of rewriting the codebuddies.org platform as an open source um, platform. This is version two, the previous version is also open source on GitHub. If you go to github.com slash codebuddies, rewriting it in Django with a React front end. So clearly uh, nothing wrong with React. The, my personal project is its, its own thing. I'm trying to keep that one simple. So if you're a Python Django developer or JavaScript and React developer, there, there's certainly room for you to contribute if you want to learn those technologies or if you have been using them for a long time. Uh, we got tasks that are suitable for you know, new and experienced developers alike. All right, well, thanks again for checking out this recap. Have a great day.